Hey kids, Mr. Fly here, hope you're well. And uh, welcome back to the channel. Another bike review for you. Today I'm out and about on the Street Triple once again. This time I'm on the brand new for 2023 Street Triple RS. Okay, so you may have seen my video a few days back on the Street Triple R, which is the less blingy brother of this bike. Might be worth watching that video first if you haven't seen it. Because this bike is like that bike with knobs on. It shares the same 765cc engine that uh, found fame originally in the Triumph Daytona, the sports bike, which was then a 675. It got stroked and bored out to a 765. And then uh, Triumph used a variant of it in its Moto2 race bikes. And uh, this particular engine has been breathed on by those guys that did the Moto2 engine which means this actually has 10 brake horsepower more than the uh, less blingy R version of the bike. Oddly, even though it's got that slightly different tune on the engine, it's got exactly the same torque numbers. We'll go through the specs in detail a little bit in a minute. Before we talk more about how the bike rides though, let's take a look at her. Okay, check out the looks of this RS in the sunshine. Doesn't that colour absolutely pop? I think the yellow looks absolutely superb on here. At last, Triumph have done at least one decent colour on here. So let's have a little look around then. I mean, that tank just looks beautiful, doesn't it? That metallic yellow, really, really nice. Uh, on here, you've got the uh, underslung exhaust. I think I preferred the old underseat exhaust to the original Street Triple, but uh, there we go. That's how it is these days. This swing arm on here, they call it a gull wing swing arm, I think. I mean, it looks quite cool, doesn't it? And you can see tucked up that uh, Olin shock as well. We'll go through the full spec a bit later. But in terms of how the bike looks, especially in the sunshine, she absolutely pops, doesn't she? All right, so much for that. Let's go and ride her. Okay, so welcome back aboard the bike where I find myself stuck at a red light here in Princess Risborough. While I'm stuck here, I get a chance to show you where my feet are. Look, flat on the deck, almost. I've almost got flat on the deck either side. I'm five foot eight with a 32 inch leg. So I'm a shorty, but relatively long legs. And in fact, the suspension does give a little bit. I can pretty much flat foot this, even though it's got a pretty tall seat on here. It's absolutely very easy to live with. So when I say this is the more blingy version of the bike, what bits of bling do you get? Well, the big changes are the suspension. This has, on the rear, it's got uh, Olin's suspension on here. So on paper that's better, but we'll talk more about that in a minute. It's got a slightly different rake on it. It's got a bit of a sharper nose angle if you like to make the uh, turn in a little bit better and the back's raised up a little bit with that higher seat height so it's a little bit more sporty feeling generally so it says on paper but I have to say I was riding that R not more than an hour ago and this feels exactly the same to me if you have a look at my uh, leg position here it's quite sporty but I am sat relatively upright to me it feels exactly the same as the R and exactly the same as my old 2012 street triple very familiar and very comfortable the other difference is this has different tires more sporty tires the Pirelli Rosso Corsas I think they are versus the Conti's on the R version of the bike and then the other big change is this has a more sophisticated TFT the uh, R has the display from the Tiger 660 Whereas this has the more sophisticated display, the likes of which I think you see on things like the uh, Tiger 900, I think has a similar display to this. I actually quite like the more basic display, but what this one gives you as an optional extra if you want it, is a Bluetooth module. Which means you can then connect it up to your phone to listen to music, all that sort of thing. I'm never too worried about that, personally. This bike also has an extra riding mode, a more track focused riding mode. By the way, I've got this in sport mode at the moment, so it's exactly the same as the R that I rode a little while ago so it's a fair test well, I'm just coming up here to Cop Hill which is a famous road just here on the left I'm going to go up it because this used to be used for hill climbs it's an excellent road to do a quick test of what this bike's like in terms of acceleration here we go hunker down <laughs> wow yeah she flies in fact I've run out of bottle and I'm easing off slightly because it's very fast this bike you do notice that extra 10 horsepower actually, which I didn't think I would, but you absolutely can. Beautifully handling motorcycle. 
and very, very fast. I know it's been said before, but you don't need more horsepower than this for the road. It's, uh, it's brilliant, just the right amount, really. I said that about the R as well, and that had 10 horsepower less. Quick shifter on here is beautiful. Let's come down this way. Let's just quickly test the brakes, nothing behind me. Slightly uprated brakes on this as well. This has got the Brembo style lemurs on, whereas it's a uh, less blingy little brother. It's got the M4.32 calipers. Let's just try that. Holy cow, those style lemurs are really good. Really progressive feel, great initial bite. And then prodigious stopping power. Yeah, they do feel better actually. I'm surprised I can feel the difference between these and the brakes on the R, but uh, you can. When you ride them back to back like that, these style lemurs are really, really impressive. On this bumpy road, I have to say the suspension feels quite a bit more harsh than on the R. I, I assume they're both, as they come out of the factory, they're set, you know, in their most neutral position. The R, I have to say, felt more plush on the road, to me. This, no doubt, will be better handling on the track, but for road riding, I think I'll take the lesser suspension, thank you very much. It's interesting that, isn't it? Sometimes things that sound better on paper aren't always better in practice, are they? It does feel a little bit sharper on the turns, but it's not like the R doesn't feel sharp. I mentioned the uh, fancier TFT on here, which does look quite nice. You can tailor it to what you want. I've got this in a particular style that I like at the moment. Switch gear very similar to on the R, but the big difference is this. It's got the little joystick here, look on the left, to control functions, whereas the R has the little uh, four-way keypad, which I actually prefer. I find this little joystick, sometimes you can get it confused with the indicator switch, which is a bit of a pain. And also in gloved hands, it can be a bit fiddly to use. Oh, there's these traffic lights again. Let's get through them while they're on green quick. Oh, sorry officer. Made it, I think I got away with that. <laughs> so yeah, the switch gear I actually prefer on the R, funnily enough. It's not much different. Oh, there's a speed camera. Make sure I'm doing 30 or below. Okay, let's go through the numbers on this bike then, shall we? Starting with the engine, the incredible Triumph Triple. They are masters of the triple, aren't they? Uh, this one now puts out 130 PS. That's 128.2 brake horsepower at 12,000 RPM. So about 10 HP more than the R, as I say. And uh, it's at 500 RPM higher in the rev range. Torque 80 Newton meters at 9,500 RPM. So that's exactly the same. Brakes on the RS, these amazing Brembo style lemurs. Incredible stopping power out of these four pot calipers. They're on 310 mil discs. At the back end, exactly the same as on the R. These are Brembo single pot caliper on a 220mm disc. Suspension on the front of the RS, again, I think it's exactly the same as on the R, actually. These are the Showa Big Piston separate function forks, 41mm uh, uh, on the front. And this is the blingy difference on the rear. On the RS, you've got the Olin's STX40 monoshock uh, with that reservoir there. Again, this is fully uh, adjustable. Seat height on the RS is 836mm, which is actually 10mm more than the R. You can get a low seat though, which will save you 28mm if you're a shorty. Wet weight of the bike, 188 kilograms. that's a kilogram less than the R version. Tank capacity on here, 15 litres, and Triumph quote exactly the same MPG as the R at 52.8 miles per gallon. Electronics wise, I think she's pretty much the same as the R actually. Got optimised cornering ABS, switchable optimised traction control, uh, that's all controlled by an IMU. Uh, front wheel lift control. It's got that 5 inch TFT, which is different to the R, of course. Uh, LED lights, 5 riding modes, which is one more than the uh, R. And of course, it's got that up down quick shifter, too. Price of the RS, 11,295. So, and the R is 1,700 less. So, you've got to decide whether the suspension, brakes, etc., are worth that extra. Colours the RS are available in. I think I got that wrong earlier. It comes in carnival red, silver ice, or cosmic yellow. For me, this yellow is the one. Mirrors on here, different to on the R. These have got the bar end mirrors, which I actually way prefer the look of. I think if I had an R, I would replace them with these bar end ones. They work really well. I can see a treat out the back. I think they're the same as on my Speed Twin, actually. No vibration. Really nice mirrors. Great to see this has got heated grips as well. I don't know if that comes as standard. I assume it does, but I don't actually know. I love the sound of the engine on here. Triumph really know how to do triples. The induction noise is brilliant. As hopefully you heard when I went up Cop Hill. I was a little bit distracted at the time, so I couldn't uh, focus on how the bike sounded. <laughs> 
but I'm glad to say they've kept that triple noise they haven't done like they have with some of the other triples the Tigers where they've uh, made them sound more like more like twins giving them a bit more twin grunt for off-roadiness this keeps its triple character and that's a good thing seat on here it's a little bit hard actually it's not terribly uncomfortable or anything like that I think after a couple of hours it might start to give you a bit of numb bum but it is nice and wide and there's plenty of room on it I think even if for bigger guys you'd probably be alright on here annoyingly Trump persists with these horrible brake reservoirs this plastic thing why they don't put an anodized one on, I don't know, especially on the premium bike. Please do that triumph in future. <laughs> but overall, minor gripes is all they are, because I, I absolutely love this bike. It's easy to handle, easy to live with, it rides nicely, it sounds good, it looks good, it goes well. It's not a bad price point. Handling's beautiful. For roads like this, you know, the back lanes in England on a summer's day. What more do you need? Really beautiful. So that's pretty much it, I think, for my uh, first ride review of the RS version of the Street Triple. I make no apologies to being somewhat of a gushing fanboy. I've always loved the Street Triple. And this newest one, no exception. Yeah, lovely bike. Triumph, as I say. Absolutely got themselves a winner here. And on a day like today, really nice. Yeah, well done Triumph, you've nailed the Street Triple, give us some more colours and we'll all buy one, I think they're fair. Uh, they're going to have a big sales success on their hands with this. Why do you need the Speed Triple when this one gives you everything that it does in a bit of a lighter package, I love it. Alright, going to ride the bike some more, enjoy the new Street Triple, I hope you enjoyed that uh, first ride on the bike. Do stay tuned to the channel if you're interested in the Street Triple. As I say, hopefully, before these bikes go back, I'll have a chance to do a uh, comparison video and final sum up on the things I've learned about the bike over the period that I've had them and have been riding them. All right, that's it for now. I look forward to speaking to you again soon. Until next time, this has been the Mist and Fly. Cheerio.